Hello and welcome to this Comp3218 game design and development video from the University of Southampton. My name is Tom Blount, I am one of the lecturers on the course and I'm joined today by... Charles Hutchins, I'm a demonstrator. And we're going to be looking at some of the students' uh, first courseworks for this module. So Charles, can you tell us a little bit about what this coursework involved? Sure, so uh, we asked the students uh, to um, give us um, a game, uh, like a, a prototype game, um, which has a strong core dynamic and a tutorial element as well. Excellent. So let's jump in to our first game. Okay, and our first game is Orb Seeker. So nice little um, title splash screen. Uh, it's a nice little cute little pic pixely font, and we've got a tutorial level, so let's jump straight into that. Okay, R to reset the level if needed. It's interesting that that's the first control they've decided to teach, but okay. Mm -hmm. haven't, uh, haven't taught us any other controls, but let's... Yeah, there we go. So standard arrow keys for movement. And it looks like it's pretty grid based, so we're not... So I can't go diagonally or anything like that. I can just go from square to square. Okay. But we do have this nice little orange path that sort of, I guess, highlights the direction, but... Oh no, it's blocked. But hey... It looks like we can push push these boxes uh, okay. in the grand tradition. Is there anything down here? No, nothing down here except some lovely waves. And if I press R, yep, we do indeed reset. Ah, but I can't push two boxes at once. Okie doke, so we keep following the path. And we make it to the end. There is only one correct orb per level, and its colour is important. So I'm guessing that that there is orb, and we've got a blue orb. How do we know which one to pick? Aha! Blue door. Mm. So just for the sake of argument, what happens if we pick a green orb? We just go back to the start. Nice, okay. Nice short little iteration, so let's go for blue orb. Okay, and we get a nice little sound effect. I, mm -hmm. We don't know what the orb does, we just know that it was the correct orb. I'm guessing though it unlocks the door. Okay, we don't know if we want that orb yet. Oh, interesting. So these boxes I can't move. Mm. Okie doke. So let's let's leave that orb there for now. We'll come back to that orb. We go this way. This feels like a trap because I can see just on the edge of the screen there's another box. So if I push this mm -hmm. that way, I'm gonna get stuck. I can't, yeah, I still can't push those boxes. We've got green orb, let's not get that. Then we've got orange orb. Aha, and blue door. So let's go get that blue orb, and then we can come back. So yeah, nice little, um, nice little walking sounds, nice little sort of ambient audio in the background. The graphical style mm. is nice. Oh no, oh. it was the wrong orb. Now, I, I did see this game in the uh, expo session we have, so I did know that was going to happen, but I thought it would be nice oh. to illu illustrate as if it were the first time I was seeing. So that's that's a sneaky trick, because there is a blue door, but that's the wrong blue door. So if we go up a bit further, that's not the door we want to go through. So this is kind of interesting, because now we're being taught to not push those boxes. Mm. And here we have more more orb, or morb as I call them. So there we go, we've got pink door, orange door, and then behind this fence that we can't actually get to is blue door. So we actually want pink orb. Mm. So I'm, I'm I'm honestly not sure how I feel about that, because on the one hand, that's like an, a, a pretty sneaky and underhanded trick to put into your level. Yeah. But equally, it's kind of an interesting puzzle of like encouraging you to explore the whole level before deciding mm. to commit to one of those orbs. And now now the bit I have been a little bit dreading is not the right word, but this is where the puzzle gets a bit more complex and I have to talk about things and puzzle solve at the same time. <laughs> so I might be pressing the R key quite a little bit. So while I'm while I'm floundering with this, shall we start talking about the uh, look at the mark scheme? So what is yes. the first uh, first criteria on the 
uh, it is uh, quality. Um, and first sub criteria we have is presentations. So that's graphics, audio, and information design. Okie doke. So, so where are we looking at that? So we've got a number of keywords that we're looking for, and so would you say this is this is at least workable, right? So we've got some clear clear differentiation between uh, most of the objects. So I was going to say all of the objects. It's not entirely true. There are definitely some boxes that we can push and some we can't. So the information design maybe could use like some work. So if those bottle bottles boxes looked particularly, you know, like metal and heavy and immovable rather than a slightly different texture to the movable ones. I think I've, mm. I've definitely messed us up here. Then that would that would bump it up a little bit. But in terms of the the audio and like the um, the graphical design, everything seems nice and clear and consistent. I would say it's it's probably up in the um, professional level. Do we think it's do we think it hits um, an excellent for an excellent? It would need to be impactful. I I'm not sure I put it that far. I think, um, I think you're right. So I think the the differentiation between what's movable and what's not for a game that mostly revolves around moving things is probably probably the thing that keeps it from being there. I can't I can't get mm. this orb right. Yeah, wrong orb. Because green green door, so looking for the green orb. Okay. But do but do, but do you think it hits it hits the good level that we're looking for here? So that's a complete and effective I mean it, it is complete. Um, every, everything is very thematic, isn't it? Like, there's nothing that I'm seeing that's kind of like out out of character. Um, you look like you're a little like a little knight person, and you're like walking through a forest. So like, it's all kind of like I suppose a medieval kind of theme, um, and a little bit magical with like portals and things like that. Oh, sorry, not portals, but orbs. Um, so I feel like it's complete. Um, and uh, we've got an effective audio system, haven't we? Where we can, where we, if we go over the wrong, uh, the wrong orb, then there's like a little like negative sound effect, and there's a positive one when we do find the right one. Um, so, yes, I, I wouldn't say it was inconsistent. Would you say it was inconsistent? No, no. I think other than those, uh, the information design of the boxes, I think could, it's not necessarily ink. Hang on, let me go back. The graphics themselves are mostly consistent. The information design could be made clearer, but you're right. I don't think it's necessarily inconsistent. So I think we're sort of solidly, solidly in the good sort of section here. Yeah. Okay. So moving on to meaningful play, which is sort of how, how, how does it play? Is it fun? Um, so what mechanics have we got to play with? We've got pushing, pushing boxes, collecting orbs. That is mostly it, but they are combined in a number of sort of effective ways to give us a number of different puzzles and a number of different types of puzzles, which is kind of nice. Mm -hmm. So we've maybe got few fewish mechanics, but the actual sort of mm -hmm. overall controls for them, I think, are handled quite nicely. It feels very smooth. The I guess initially the fact that I can't move diagonally that I'm locked onto this grid felt a bit odd, but as soon as they start introduced started introducing you know the, the block based pushing puzzle that it suddenly sort of all, all fell into place and made a lot of sense mm. i i want to go up this middle path don't i i'm quite glad that you're playing this and not me <laughs> yeah i think it's already messy so i want to go i want to go around that way mm, okay so while I'm while I'm faffing with this, uh, would we say it's playable? So we'll say look, what was it? So good, it will be um, engaging uh, mechanic, uh, multiple mechanics, smooth controls, reasonable complexity. We may still have very minor bugs. Uh, I think probably from what you said, it's not it's not particularly complex. Um, I'm thinking more on the satisfactory level, which is like usable controls may have minor, but to be honest, we haven't seen any. I haven't seen any bugs. I don't know about you. Yeah, I definitely um, haven't seen bugs. I'm thinking. Oh. Yeah. I think I feel like like that. Uh, no, I've. Can I go this way? I can go this way. Sorry, I got distracted by puzzles. So yeah, I'm thinking that there's maybe not necessarily a huge amount of mechanics, but 
everything other than that is like firmly in the good section, I would say. Hmm. So maybe somewhere in between a satisfactory and a good. Yeah, Ooh, that yeah. sounds about right. Reasonable. Yeah. Yeah, because an, an excellent would be intuitive controls, higher complexity. I have a horrible feeling an that I did something at the start of this that has now come back to bite me. Ah. Uh. <laughs> no. Wait, wait, wait. No. I live. There we go. Okay, so uh, that takes us on to how well they fulfilled the overall brief, so the level design and the tutorial. What do we think about uh, level design in terms of the goals, the risks, and the rewards? I wouldn't say, I mean, there is a very clear goal. Very clear uh, goal. Get to the door. It's good. Is there I I anything in the way of risks and rewards? I would say there's very little in terms of risk really because oh, yeah, you can move the box to the ro wrong place that's true and that is a risk um, but it's not balanced by a reward right it's not like they have a, yeah it's a, a, a quite a binary uh, quite binary in terms of both scoring and like puzzle in so much as you either win or you don't but there's no no way of telling how well you did so there's very little to risk in that sense hmm which, also someone... that, which that doesn't always have to be. Like these puzzles are fine, but it is one of the things that we said we'd be looking for in the mark scheme. So although the goal is very, very clear and consistent through all of the levels, that there, there isn't necessarily that element of risk and reward. So that would be. Hmm. So the goal is clear and coherent. The risks and rewards are, I would say, probably even very limited. Hmm which puts us between a pass and a satisfactory if that's what we're averaging things as. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds I think that sounds reasonable. But also it's interesting that there's no in indication of um say a a pro person like would play this game and they solved it, you know, in as few minutes as possible, you get the same score as if you just solved it, you know, taking your time, if that makes sense. Uh yeah, and on the one hand, they could have they could have um, addressed that by you know including a timer, so it becomes about how fast can you get through it, and the more the mm. faster you try and go through it, the more likely you are to make a mistake and cost yourself time in the long term. So mm -hmm. I can see why they've not done that because they don't necessarily want that sort of pressure to it. But that would have been mm. one way of addressing this kind of thing. So yeah, clear goal, limited risk reward, I think. So the next bit, uh, pacing. How is the pacing managed? Well, we've definitely got some pacing from the tutorial to the to the um, certainly to the main. Level. Certainly, there is a jump in difficulty. That is true. <laughs> I think I've already uh, messed things up for myself there. Um, and yeah, the puzzles definitely escalate, and in a pretty satisfying way as well. Yeah, I think it's. Uh, I would say it's probably more of a step function than a rise gradually. I don't know if. Yeah, I don't know if that's what you feel. Um, so yeah, across the levels there's definitely rising tension. Within the levels... Mm, I don't know, there's there's definitely elements of like incremental progress through some of them, like particularly um, this level and the very the final level where you, there's almost like the can you get through the first bit, then can you get through the second bit. Mm. I suppose actually, so that that would be some sort of uh, you know rising over time. Yeah, uh, so and it's that in, would... in a relatively coherent pattern. So let's can I oh, nice nice little menu screen as well. Always a nice touch. Let's just go back oh, to the nice. tutorial to remind ourselves of that. So yeah, so, certainly much easier in the tutorial. I'm pretty happy with how I can do this. Um, so yeah, tension's clearly rising over time. It's in a mostly coherent pattern, but I think maybe this falls between the satisfactory and good. What do you think? Do you think maybe it reaches good? So good would be a clear and coherent set. Oh, sorry. 
would be tension rises over time in a coherent pattern. Yeah. It is coherent, for sure. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know if we're playing it. Do you feel like this? I, can't, I didn't actually see. Was there, are there two levels after the tutorial? Yes. And there was definitely, like, you, you thought that there was definitely a step. Like, there was a change between level one and level two. So there's, I guess here's the thing, there's definitely a rise in challenge. I don't know if it always maps to a rise in tension, but for the most part I think it probably does. So yeah, all right, I'm happy to say that that, that falls into the good category. Yeah. I, I like, so we're going to talk about this in a second, in fact right now, um, the tutorial. I like that they, uh, they have, like, they introduced the moving in boxes, they introduce the orbs, and then they introduce combinations of them, and they also introduce the boxes in a particular, in a new way. Which is to say, mm. sometimes you have to not push boxes. Which I think is almost as important as teaching the player that they can push the boxes. I think the yeah. introducing the fact that there are, like, decoy orbs is done in a... I, I'm still... I don't know, maybe I'm just bitter that they fooled me the first time, but it is kind <laughs> of a nice way of teaching the player that they have to explore before they commit to something. It's yes. almost a shame that it's not used as much in the later levels. Mm. Because you start right next to the door so you know immediately what colour you need. So they don't actually make use of that thing they've taught you uh, enormously. Mm. But otherwise, um, yeah, we've got a gradual explanation of uh, the gameplay and the controls. It's it's fully aligned with play because you do it through yeah. like a series of actual levels. Um, I it's almost even at the excellent because some of it is communicated through the level design, like that uh, the trick orb. Yeah, yeah, I, I do agree, and also with the what, you know, uh, with actually right at the beginning, there's an example of it when you have to push those boxes, but you're not told to push boxes. You just walk into them because they look like maybe this is the way to go, and then. And actually, you're right. Then, then you learn the mechanic through that. Um, so yeah, I would probably agree to the excellent level. Um, I don't know about prize worthy. Fully aligned play communicated through level. So, so for prize worthy, it needs to be fully aligned with play and basically fully communicated through the level design, rather than just sometimes. And there are a couple of elements like the orbs in particular, where they they. They do it sort of externally to the level design, and I, c I can see exactly why they've done that because it's a bit of an unusual concept to uh, convey. Mm. But just like they teach you with that trick orb, they they do they do try and do bits of that through the level design. So maybe they could have done it a bit more fully. But otherwise, I think I think you're right. I think we're probably at an excellent tutorial there. Mm. So the last, uh, not sorry, not quite the last bit, almost the last bit, is the core dynamic. So what is the, the fun and engaging bit of their game? So um, we asked uh, the students to hand in a set of game design notes where they could uh, talk talk this through. What what did they say their uh, core dynamic was going to be? They said it was spatial reasoning. And that, Yeah, that pretty much hits the nail on the head because we're given a space yeah. and then we have to reason our way through it. So that definitely feels very, very consistent to me. Um, it's supported by the primary mechanics. That hits are good. I think we already talked about there's maybe not as wide a set of mechanics as there could have been to sort of make full use of this and combine into even deeper puzzles. Mm. I suppose this is like sort of like a... Because this is sort of like a, supposed to be a um, almost like a prototype, you can kind of see where it's kind of where, where it's going. Um, in terms of you can, like, you know, more, more mechanics could be imp like implemented that would like strengthen that core dynamic in the future. But yeah, it, it does. It possibly does lack a few currently. But yeah. So I think I think that this feels like sort of between a good and an excellent. So the the mechanic is very very clear. It's definitely supported by the mechanics that are there. But to even mm. emphasise it further, it would have been nice to see like the introduction of some more uh, more mechanics in perhaps the later stages. Yeah. Okay. And last but by no means least is feedback. So students were given the chance to get some feedback from the module team uh, during their development, and then uh, we're going to be looking at how they not only. Um, responded to that but how they've interpreted it and if they've done anything interesting with it so what what feedback did they uh, receive uh, so 
making it more of a challenge to the player is one of their feedbacks. Um, so they only had a single red orb which unlocked a single door. So increase the complexity of the game by introducing three more color coded orbs. Okay, that's an, in, that's a good. I would say that's probably a good change. I think we've enjoyed the fact that we have to like find the right one, and it's interesting that that wasn't part of like the um, like design stage. It actually came as part of feedback, which is interesting. Which I suppose strengthens the you know that the need for uh, like um, uh, play testing for sure. Um, is it what else have they said? Uh, tutorial was too spread out from the feed other feedback that they got. Initially, the first two uh, tutorials were very basic. One is just the environment, getting the player controls and movement. Um, okay. So then they. Not completely understanding that second point that the tutorial was too spread out. They introduced so it looks like the first one they had one tutorial getting used to the environment and the second tutorial getting used to the objective of reaching the door. So what they did is they combined. Yes, I remember that. Now. The same level but in the same tutorial kind of spot, which I think was a good move actually. Yeah, yeah, it's a good move. And then they decided to use the, the second tutorial as an actual level in the game. Which I think, yeah, would be good, a good change, I'd say. And then the last one was, um, based on puzzle mechanics, we decided that we should choose whether the camera should show the whole of the level or follow the player. And avoid a mix of both. We ended up going with the latter. So it, it, as, you, as you're reading out that feedback, if you want to read it just a little bit louder so the folks at home can hear as well. Oh, sorry. I have been. Um, so, um, yeah, they, they were basically deciding on whether they should have the camera follow the player, as what we've got now, or whether the um, uh, it's, there should just be one static map, and you should you should um, uh, navigate that that like that way. Um, I quite like the. I quite like with what they stuck with, where you can only see part of the map, because I think that makes it like a. a Quite a, you know a, a bigger challenge. See that's interesting because I my gut instinct is to go with a one where you can see the whole level because for spatial reasoning you don't you don't want to sort of make a bunch of moves and then get halfway through and realize you've trapped yourself right because that feels unfair because you haven't been given all the information you need to reason over the space. Mm. Which is sort of is something that I mentioned when I was talking about the core dynamic. Equally it does feed into that sort of exploration thing. So they do, they almost have like a secondary supporting dynamic there. Uh, but uh, like with that trick orb again, they're encouraging you to explore the whole space before you commit to things. Unfortunately, because of the way some of the puzzles are laid out, you kind of have to sort of tinker with moving boxes and possibly trap yourself before you fully explored it. So there's maybe a um, some supporting elements and some detracting elements from it as well. So I think mm. they could have absolutely done either of those. So, so whether they decided to go for the whole zoomed out camera so that it was more clearly about spatial reasoning or the zoomed in one to try and add that supporting dynamic. I think either of them could have been good choices. Um, mm. uh, and yeah, so it's not a problem that they went with this by any means. Although it's maybe not had the full effect that they were hoping for. Uh, yeah, I suppose there's no there's no penalty for for resetting. It feels like it's that you have to do it again, sort of thing. Which is, you don't get like a negative score or anything. So, like you say, you're you're more encouraged to kind of like right, let's 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 go and and you know do something wrong, um, and then we learn from it. Um, but apart, but I suppose the hard only thing is that you're not you're not really rewarded for going for exploring further. You've only got very much one goal. Um, so I suppose it would have been nice to see like a few more items or something to collect, where you can say like, well, I'll have a side objective where I'll like I'll I'll get the the dynamite or something, and that will blow up a box for me, and that would help yeah. me. So that's going back uh, to mechanics, but purely in terms of then the feedback sorry, yeah. that they got given. Also, actually, while while we're on a slight tangent, I will just say I really like this element of the final puzzle where 
you effectively complete the puzzle and then you end up having to backtrack along a route you already solved. That's kind of a neat little twist on it. I think that's actually a good uh, good element of puzzle design is throwing in a little twist like that. Um, but yeah, in terms of the feedback they've got, I think mostly... So the bits that they got were addressed. They've been mostly successful. Mm. Uh, that would put them sort of between a satisfactory and a good. I don't think they've gone necessarily as far with their interpretation of the feedback to do something particularly interesting. They've mostly sort of gone, ah yes, that, that's a good point, we'll do exactly that. Which is, you know, fine, and it puts them between a satisfactory and a good. Mm. Yeah. Okay, which brings us to the end of this game. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, and our next game is the not not even the triple A experience, the quadruple A experience. So already setting setting the bar for themselves quite high. Um, otherwise, a relatively plain title screen, but you know that's maybe that's the interposition of uh, expectation. With uh, anyway, let's let's jump straight into it. How did you even Ooh. manage to find one of them? It was scurrying around up above, but don't worry, I made sure to preserve it well. Okay, so that half they are waking up. About time. Welcome, Welcome participant, participant two. two. Game Sync. We thank you for volunteering to take part in our monetary model testing program. Oh yes, volunteering. Our aim here at Game Sync is to create the most Beautiful, profitable, profound, shareholder pleasing game. Well, let us begin. See you at the next test. But you haven't even explained the test. Well, there's a keep it next to a door. I would say that's pretty obvious, right? Oh, wait. Potential increase to profit margin detected. I do not believe these are essential. I am pretty sure they are. You cannot just. They can just purchase them at a later point. Terminating transmission. Okay then. So yeah, uh, so two two interesting things of note. One, there was a whole bunch of controls listed on the side of the screen, uh, and I didn't, and I was too busy listening to the audio to read what it said. So, mm. Mm, so maybe not the most so nice polished like introduction. I like the fact that they had a cutscene. I like the fact that it had the sort of bleary opening of the eyes and a sort of portal-esque vibe of robotic voice telling you welcome to the testing chamber but in terms of tutorializing the movement controls it feels like now would be the perfect time to have those show up rather than before but hey yeah. so I've, I've at least managed to figure out looking and moving i think there was a crouch as well yeah but I don't, e? is it e no i thought it was control no. okay so we've got an arrow over here got a an exit here and with a flashing light so we've got some good like level design and um, what's the word uh, highlighting of our goals mm -hmm. and we've got a keypad that imbecile doesn't understand here take it back oh incorrect coordinates go grab one of those things over there and try and knock it down okay so I walked up yeah. to the keypad and we got a message say where well have you snapped around to look at the duck? The duck is in color and everything else is in black and white. I assume the duck is important. We have to knock down the duck. It said grab one of those things over there and I'm not quite sure what it meant, but let's go up these mm. stairs. And have, I mean, there's an arrow telling us to go up here, so let's go up here. There is duck. Aha! Contextual controls. That's, that's more like it. So pick up, interact, and left click to throw. Pick up, interact, and I'm just gonna meet this over here to see what happens. Bonk. Okay, I'm just getting my eye in. Let's try. Okie doke. Uh -huh. So the floating duck is now no longer floating. I'm not sure that the floating cartoony duck necessarily fits in the vibe. I'm of afraid this is as much as I can help. I wish you luck. Of like grungy underground testing chamber. But okay. Um, yeah. Now we've got color again. Not sure how that links to a duck, but but now we can see in color. Now we're, there were colors written on the door, so we've got red, purple, green, blue, and we've got a keypad. And some of these things are red, purple, green, and blue. Mm. 
There's also a blue light up there, but I think that may, may be left over from the duck. Right, so if I pick these up, no, I can't pick these up. Now, is that just a texture or does that look like it says one? Sure. But that looks like a texture over there. So, okay, one, five. Is it a one? Am I just looking at it upside down? Oh, no, I know. Yeah, I think it's a one. It's a one. Yeah. So we've got a five. So red, purple, green, blue. So we've got five. That's purple. Five, seven, one. Blue up there. Five, seven, one, zero. I'm hoping that is. So let's let's call this a bit of a lateral thinking puzzle. But hey. Uh, was it five? Uh, I can't click on the keypad. Can't click on maybe E to interact. Hmm. Hmm. It's possible one of those controls right at the start would have taught me how to do this, but as I didn't need it at the start and I need it now, it's uh, maybe I can. You are it. taking too long. This is supposed to be easy. Just look at the barrels. The keys are near them. So we got a contextual hint for solving the puzzle at least, mm. but not for inputting the code, which is. Mm. So I like that they had that contextual like additional tutorial. We're taking too long, here's a little hint. That's kind of nice and sort of normally exactly the kind of thing we'd need in a game like this. Yeah. Is there I might it's that gonna that's gonna quit out of the whole thing. So let's let's load it up again and we'll just see if we can see whether those controls had anything. I've got to make sure I reshare it for uh, my co-host here. There we go, let's try that again. How did you even manage to find one of them? So, interesting, they've got some notes here about, you know, the, the solution, if you will. Um, they just say input the code. Um, they don't actually say how. Crouch to welcome participant to pick up game tin. Maybe we've got to we thank you for volunteering to yeah. take part in our there's a skip cutscene button. That's kind of nice. It means that if we're that's if good. we're doing this multiple times, uh, oh, that's right. We've got to we've got to go and knock the duck down first. The sprint doesn't feel enormously speedy. Oh, there's no duck there, so we have to go to go to exit first, and then. That imbecile doesn't understand. Here, take it back. Oh, incorrect coordinates. It's a shame, that kind of interrupts the player a little bit, doesn't it? Go grab one of those things it? over there and try like and knock it down. It respawn or something? It, I don't know. Whenever you go up to the door, you kind of like move slightly and things are a bit different. Well, I think the idea is that you're told to go through the door, so you go over to the door, and at that point, it makes you look towards the duck to say, "Hey, you've got to go do this first, Which, yeah, which makes sense. I'm afraid this is as much as yeah. I can help. Now, do I you wish you luck. <laughs> oh, oh but, uh, there we go. Oh, that works now. So yeah, you are oh, taking cool. too long. This is supposed to be easy. Just look at the barrels. The no backspace. Are there. Though. Oh, there we go. Oh, okay. Right. All right, so five, um, so it's, uh, five, seven, one, zero, right? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Five, seven. So I was expecting to just like press interact over the keypad, and then for it to you know give me a pop up or something to click it. But no, you have to mouse over the the actual keys, and then there we go. Okay. All right, so that's. I suppose I was incorrect. We should give the consumers a complimentary feature. I am sometimes surprised at my own generosity, right design? Yes, very generous. Since I have gifted you the basics, there will be no more requests, will there? Now get this over with, please. Okay, more well, puzzle. So we have... So I don't seem to be able to crouch, despite them telling me a crouch control. I also don't mm. feel like I'm sprinting, despite them telling me a sprint control. 
I was, I don't I don't see how those mechanics would re well we haven't seen the third level yet but they don't really interact do they with we don't really interact with those controls with the rest of the environment do we but there's no need to sprint in here sometimes um, and there's no there's no real need to crouch uh, well so far anyway I think there might be soon and I think they will tutorialize that near the time like can I chuck that oh, okay. does that do anything or have I lost that forever now oh what's so all, all I know how to do at the minute is pick things up and throw things and that doesn't seem to be helping me solve this maybe one of each oh well, they, 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 come they have all come out that's interesting do I have to do it in the order that it was out there well, hang on, we've got these big cans. Where's but no big blue can? I don't know if, I don't know if that's important. Uh, do you remember what order they were in out here? I think that's I think that's probably an important well, that's that's the order, I think. Okay, but I can't I can't actually go and check what the order is, so I just have to remember it. And because I didn't know I had to remember it, I'm potentially <laughs> Just I don't think, now it, I, I think the, these levels like are like um, they're they're separate. Oh, okay, okay, so oh, okay, so you reckon it's just green, purple, red? Oh, because when I put four in, that's when they all fell out. Yeah, all right. So, so it's okay. like saving them going like so. That's that's the only indication that actually it's it's working. There oh, there we go. go. <laughs> got Again, another duck. Not sure the duck fits necessarily the rest of the aesthetic they've got going here. I believe we agreed oh. to no more requests. I did not. Either way, two features at once is now. too many. See, now they're teaching Crouch, and now Crouch is important. So this is... If it wasn't needed up until this point, didn't need it to be mentioned up until this point. So we can toggle between whether we can see in colour or whether we can crouch, which is kind of like an interesting idea as a mechanic, right? You sort of have to trade between abilities, and presumably, like the previous puzzle, colour is going to be important. So we've got a keypad here, we've got some red barrels. I can't get under that until I do this. It does seem like a bit of an in... Ooh, and a giant keypad. What colour do you see? Seven, 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 six, six, six. So that's going to be. So SOS is. Okay, We've got arrows over there. So red and blue. So if I type in, can I, can I type in onto this? Oh, hang on. So we've got a red keypad over here. So red would be seven, 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 three, three, three. Let's see if that happens. Uh... Hey. Yeah. I'm amazed. I'm amazed I made that connection. All right. So blue would be uh, two two five five five. Do the do the keypads over here have those on as well? Oh, they do. Wonderful. So we got B L U E. There we go. So we've unlocked. What's the what, where you entered that number? Was there was was there not enough like um, input? I think there was. Oh, there was. Okay, okay. Okay, so we've got two two blue doors. All right. So while I'm fumbling around with these puzzles. Maybe we've got a green light in here. Is there a green code to put in anywhere? No, but there's a number eight. So I guess that's the main door. Uh, so yeah, while I'm fumbling around with this, shall we shall we talk about the uh, marks criteria? Yes. So we'll talk about the first one, which is uh, quality, and sub criteria is presentation. So that's 
graphics, audio, and information design. So um, I'm overall, not hearing much audio. Um, other than the, uh, the the lovely voice acting of Microsoft Sam. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's no like sort of ambient music. I guess so if we're going for like the industrial sort of grungy test chamber vibe, like some mechanical humming or buzzing in the background would maybe set the scene a little bit. But mm -hmm. I like the fact that they've included audio. I will say, in terms of like you know an accessibility point of view, or even a two people try and talk about it while let's playing it, ha having the ability to maybe mute that and have some subtitles would be you know a little bit of extra polish. But in terms yeah. of the audio that's there, the the sound effects, so the sort of like clicks of buttons and um, the the voice acting is pretty nice. Could be improved with a little bit of extra polish for either subtitles or um, some ambient audio. What about the graphics? Um, I would say it was all kind of very much in theme. Um, um, really? <laughs> I would say it's mostly, the mostly in theme. There's The duck's a little <laughs> bit of an anomaly. Like, yeah. like I get that. Or, or rather, I feel like they're going for a kind of a... Oh, is that a seven? I see. That they're going for like a sort of portly industrial test chamber, sort of tongue in cheek game design development thing. I still don't really yeah. know where we are or why we're here. Um, yeah. That's a. The fact that they've got blue and purple as the colours as well is a bit weird because they look very similar to me. Like, they I would do, have gone yeah. for, you know, maybe yellow. Yeah. Also, in terms of accessibility, I guess this is just going to be a. Uh, just a, a wider issue with using colours in your puzzles. So it's, it's lucky that I'm not red, green, colour blind, or I'd be having an even harder time with this than I am right now. But okay, so <laughs> would you say, so I, would, I think we can say that it's at least, you know, the presentation is workable, right? The, the information design, mm. like there's some, some accessibility issues potentially, but otherwise it's very, very polished. In fact, probably even up to uh, good. Do you think it goes beyond that into um, like sort of excellent category? So it, like, is it impactful? I wouldn't say it was. I would say I would say complete and effective. I think it was a very. When I say it was between the two, between good and excellent. Um, I probably say would good, good would be a good. Well, good, yeah, good would be a good. A yes. good assessment. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I think it probably hits the good. I think some of the things we've mentioned. So the. Um, uh, what was I trying to say? The. Yeah, like some like some of the accessibility issues, some of the um, like slight inconsistencies in the assets they've used, maybe puts it mm. into a uh, uh, a good rather than excellent. But otherwise, yeah, it it works quite well together. Okay, which takes us to gameplay. So, what are the mechanics like? Are there any bugs? Ah, there we go. Green eight. See, I can't talk and puzzle solve at the same time. This is the issue. So I'm just going to try and remember that number. You, uh, you, you, you tell me what you think about the uh, mechanics. What mechanics have we got? So mechanics, we've got like we can we can walk around, we can interact with the environment. We've got a we can crouch to get under under obstacles. Um, it's interesting that we've got this kind of like swapping. Um, they've used kind of like color as a mechanic, and the fact that we can see it or not see it. Um, so that's quite interesting. I don't, I don't particularly see the point in that mechanic as such. It doesn't particularly. I don't feel like it gives us a particular advan uh, advantage or disadvantage. We just have to switch when we want to do a certain thing or want to see a certain thing. Yeah, like so I mean, they don't seem very, very linked at the minute. Like the fact that I, I'm in color all of the time except for when I need to crouch under something and then I just crouch under it and then turn the color immediately back on. I think yeah. later it becomes more of a thing, but at the minute they, they ah. seem very, very unlinked. I think I've also already got this wrong. Uh, so I guess, let me try uh, 8, 9, 7, 6, there we go. This is our FPS testing branch. Okay, so this is My the third right level we might be able to see some of that one and two mechanic. Like nothing and they still uh, sorry, yeah, the, the very mechanic on the... I number, thought your number. favorite was a certain number, football yeah. game that comes out every year. A beautiful be business model, yes, but times change. I suppose it's a good introduction to yeah. it. 
you know, these these mechanics are kind of like evolving over time. It's interesting that they told us about crouch and thing, uh, crouch and sprint, like you say, and they didn't, and it wasn't any need for it until later on. But I suppose that's more information design really than like a mechanical issue. Um, okay, so these things become invisible, but I can still. I can still walk on. Okay, so so uh, oh, we've got... okay, I've got to go sort of add a diagonal. Okay, so that at least combines the two mechanics that we've been shown sort of working individually so far. So I take back some of the things I've said. The fact that they've combined them here does make that more interesting it adds a little bit more complexity uh we're still yes. only talking about meaningful play that's yeah let's uh, keep going so definitely playable the puzzle design is maybe a little bit lateral um other than this one the me the mechanics don't necessarily help you solve the puzzle it's more about sort of searching for the searching for the right number on the right place yeah which is eh, fine, maybe. Oh no, I already messed that up. But this this is the one where it actually draws them together. Yeah. So, would you say it was still probably engaging? I think there's probably I think there's probably definitely an engaging element to it for sure. I mean, I'm still. I uh, think even if if even if I didn't have to make a video about this, I would probably want to play it until I got to the end. So yeah. Uh, hmm. So that, and there are multiple mechanics. I suppose there are multiple mechanics. We've just seen. The fact that this uh, is on a diagonal makes it a lot weirder to memorize than I think it otherwise would be. Because while I can definitely tell where you know like the grid lines are, is that no. Nope. So maybe I'm just approaching this the wrong way. Oh wait, now I've got to go forward first and then diagonal. There we go. Mm. Can I? And I can stand up there, and then the path is actually around that way. Still not entirely sure about the duck, but hey. <laughs> uh, okay, so yeah, definitely engaging. We've got a number of different mechanics. The controls are smooth. Uh, the complexity is. Mm, I mean, yeah. So we've got like multiple mechanics of like keypads and throwing and stuff and the color swatch switching and the crouching and all that kind of things. They feel only sort of partly integrated in the sense of like this puzzle definitely draws together these mechanics, but the others do seem to be a bit of a grab bag. Okay, mm -hmm. and now we can jump again. I think we could jump before, but then it got limited based on Okay, now we've got more numbers. So the number memorizing numbers doesn't necessarily tie into the rest of the gameplay, but ah, what are you going to do? Uh, otherwise, yeah. I feel like maybe even between good and excellent. It's, it's definitely engaging. I think it's probably fun, but there's just a few sort of odd inconsistencies and design choices. Ooh, here we go. So again, additional mechanics here. So sort of tying more into like the, the platforming, I guess, rather than the puzzle solving. Mm. Oh, no, I have to... Oh, I cannot tell you how much I don't like this, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's not say it's necessarily a bad choice, but it's not... No, wait, I forgot I couldn't jump. <laughs> it's interesting that it resets you if you fall off. So yeah. that's kind of nice because it means I don't have to walk around the stairs again but it's a little jarring um, okay so yeah I think we put this between good and excellent and then we start talking about the, the level design itself yeah so this is like goals risks and rewards sort of thing um, well we have a we definitely have a, uh, a clear goal yes um, I well you say don't... the goal is definitely get through the door but how we do that is maybe unclear at times oh, there we go no. Um, what about True. risk and reward, though? I, <laughs> I don't see it being kind of risky in a sense. I don't see myself going, oh, let's let's like do this play because it will give me an advantage or later on or something. I mean, we're going through these levels, and like you say, it's very lateral, which means that we get a new ability to solve the next puzzle. 
there isn't really any risk. There isn't any, any anything saying like, well, let's not take this reward and we'll get more points or something if we get DC. Um, or even just like two two paths of doing this. So one yeah. that's like more of these like invisible jumps, and maybe one that's. Uh, I don't know, a, a different way of approaching it that if I've got like different skills or I'm better at displaying, like, I don't know, harder jumps but a shorter path kind of a thing. So if I feel that I'm skilled enough to make those invisible jumps, I can get there quicker. So there's not a an extrinsic reward in terms of I get a higher score, but at least I'm, I get through the puzzle quicker and I get that sense of satisfaction. So yeah, it, yeah, it feels a bit like goal, goal, ultimate goal of getting through door is clear. Exactly how we achieve that goal is not a hundred percent clear all the time, which is potentially troubling for you know like a puzzle game like this because like the goal. So okay, so goal is to get through door. To get through door, you need code. To get code, it's very unclear how you do that. Mm -hmm. And part of the joy is, I guess, sort of the exploration and figuring that out. So it doesn't necessarily isn't too detrimental to it, but as you say, the risk and reward side of things is maybe a little bit more lacking there. So I think, where would we put that? Uh, so... so I think, again, before we sort of have that very limited set of goals, uh, very limited set of risks and rewards, and a clear and coherent set of um, goals. So I think that probably puts it between pass and satisfactory again. Yeah, I agree. So if we move on to pacing, so is there a sort of a clear difficulty to curve? Do the so there is a sort. Of, I mean, the puzzles do get which is a little bit more complex. I mean, they get more. This is certainly like harder. This, this it's not necessarily yeah. more complex. It does uh, draw together two of the different mechanics, but. Kind of like we were saying before, like you know, we're immediately switching back from one to the other, and only using the jump when we absolutely have to. Um, is that the jump I can make? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on! Let me up, please. <laughs> oh, okay, we've got a duck, so we've got a ah. Now we've unlocked the sprint, so. Does it feel like we're sprinting? It does feel a bit like we're sprinting. Uh, that feels like it may have been a bug that I can just stick to the wall. Yeah. But hey, I will take it at this point. Oh, goodness, there's going to be more invisible platforming up there. Oh, God. I don't know if you reset to that platform either. Please tell me. Oh, I, oh, think, I think I do. Okay. So that's nice. That's a, a good good bit of level design making. So again, this sort of goes into the pacing, right? If if they'd sent me all the way back to the beginning of that, that would have absolutely killed my motivation and sense of uh, sense of flow. So the fact that they've got those little checkpoints, good good choice. Um, yeah, it, it's very subtle, but it's also quite interesting. I think it's because of those red lines, isn't it? Those red lines indicate a checkpoint. Is that right? Uh, maybe. I th I thought maybe, it was just events. <laughs> Oh, maybe. Um, but, um, okay, so yeah, yeah. The, there's, the tension is definitely rising over time, and it's balanced nicely because of those checkpoints. I wouldn't necessarily say it's coherent, just because the... I think partly because they've got such a variety of puzzles in a way, they, fa they feel very different to each other. So one of them is about sort of searching for some numbers, one is about doing blind platforming it doesn't feel like a like it necessarily links together very well mm. and like this is about memorizing a set of layer like the the puzzles feel a bit detached from each other and i can see how they're trying to pull together those different uh, mechanics but yeah i think there's oh no Yeah, so I, th I think the, the tension clearly rises over time. It doesn't necessarily have a completely coherent pattern, so I think this probably falls around a satisfactory. Yeah, it's like a like a different kind of like um, 
hardness to a level, isn't it? Basically, this is very much more more remembering where to go and things like you're saying, and then the other one's very much more um, remembering remembering codes, trying to figure out colours and you know how to get through a door, sort of thing, the right combination. Um, so uh, yeah, that's and the and both of those don't really get more challenging, do they? Like you, you're you're almost doing the same thing again. You're just do, you know you're you're having to walk on invisible platforms, but you were doing that previously as well. So yeah, exactly. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think that comes down at about a satisfactory. Yeah. So let's go four across. Uh, so what about the tutorial? So we've got um, gradual explanation of gameplay and controls, somewhat aligned with play, satisfactory. Um, so the, well, okay, if we I've overlook probably... the fact that they just put all of the controls on the screen right at the start, they actually do okay. a reasonably good job of that. So the fact that we walk up to the obvious exit, we get told, aha, not quite yet, look at this duck, for unexplored reasons, um, and then that unlocks a new thing. The fact that the uh, interface at the bottom at least only unlocks as we get each of these new powers. Mm. Um, the fact that the keys for that only show up when they need that all is a really good job. So I was a bit you know, nitpicky by saying, hey, they introduced all of these stuff at the beginning while we're trying to listen to some explanatory cutscene. I think overall on balance, they actually have done a good job of gradually exploring and um, revealing the mechanics. Mm. How much of it do they tutorialize through the level design itself versus how much they sort of um, uh, do with sort of you know screen screen prompts and whatnot? There's a fair amount of um, just doing it with screen prompts, I suppose. I mean, we're giving a, we're given a nice uh, button. I don't know if you were told to, to change from one, two, three, and four, but it's quite clear and quite obvious that. Wait, something's appeared at the bottom of my screen. If I touch that now, oh, I can, I can now crouch. I can now jump. So there's, there's that's, that's quite good, I suppose, in a way. Um, it's quite intuitive. Um, and we're told as the level went on. So say when we were throwing the can at the duck in the first level, we walked up to the to that place, and then, and then they said, oh, you can now pick this up and throw it. Um, it's a shame that that wasn't used again, I suppose. But um, yeah, so I, I suppose where would that come in terms of tutorial? Gradual explanation of gameplay and controls fully aligned with play. I think there there are elements where it's sort of partially done through level design, but overall it's it's probably between a good and an excellent. I feel is where yeah. probably so. Okie doke. Cool. So next, so, core dynamic. So what did they say for that? So they said um, their core dynamic was spatial reasoning. Okay, that definitely, for, uh, <laughs> for the most part, fits because, yep, we're given a space and we have to reason our way around it. I think the mechanics through which we do that, as we've already touched on, are maybe not as integrated as like smoothly together as they could be like the, the actual mm. puzzles themselves are a bit do this one thing now do a completely separate thing mm. but they definitely although they don't do it necessarily in an integrated way they are all supported by the mechanics all of these different mechanics are all about getting through this space in one way or another yes uh so that I think puts them, yeah, but actually basically exactly describes a good on the mark scheme. Uh, yeah. So, uh, okay, that's one of the Which brings feedback. us to feedback. So yeah, tell us what they said about the feedback they got. They said they were told to add color. To our code graphic and text that refers to this color, we should make our game more accessible. Um, I see. I, I interesting that you it says oh, they added the color to make it more accessible. But like you say, actually, if someone was playing this game and colorblind, then that would be, um, yeah, that yeah. would be even more difficult. I am curious what they meant by the 
the places they added the color to. So obviously, like those those puzzles with the lights and colors would like I don't know what they had before. Mm. Because yeah, otherwise that would be a different. So like lots of um, games will have a colorblind mode where instead of using colors, they will use symbols. That maybe would have been a a better way to make it more accessible by having you know like the instead of a green light, the triangle light. Mm. So you could still obviously have it be green. And then you know a square light and a round light and whatever, so you can still have it be all of those colors. But the shape also is an additional clue for you know somebody with different uh, accessibility needs. Yeah. So I think the yeah, colors it's... probably do make the puzzles more interesting, but they don't necessarily yeah. add to the accessibility. Yes. Yes. So I think I'm not sure they've really completely. Um. Yeah achieved what they were hoping to with that one possibly um okay uh what else then sorry yeah so moving on we've got helpful hints if a player is taking too long about it we've, we've been advised to play an audio hint and that's that actually came up didn't it which is quite which is quite good um and uh i think that's probably quite a good addition yep agreed uh, uh although the, re the reason we got stuck was not because uh we didn't understand the puzzle it was because we didn't understand the controls but that's that's probably on us and otherwise yeah they did a good job of um incorporating those like incremental solutions although i haven't noticed any since and that's again because this is less a i guess there's, there's not really a hint you can give for this it's just don't stop being so bad tom <laughs> yeah so that another, another one they've got is a uh, gameplay tweaks we've Received suggestions to add a slight colour tint to tiles that disappear and, and a flashlight to hint at an important aspect of a puzzle. I haven't actually noticed the flashlight apart from the one you, you noticed on, the, on an exit door, say. I was going to say, do they, um, if, yeah, if they mean a flashing light, we notice the, the exit door, we notice some of the colours over the, uh, the floating ducks. Um, I mean, we haven't seen a flashlight yet, but I am also stuck on this particular bit. Uh, this time for sure. What was it? So you've also um, also been told to pick to increase the pickup <gasps> range. Okay. Uh, well, I suppose that's quite a good addition because I don't. I I didn't see you having trouble with picking things up. So yep. I'm guessing that's that was a good good addition. Um, what was the code again? There's a skip. Oh, yeah, I skip <sighs> I'm oh, going to right? scream. <laughs> if I recall correctly, it was by the vents on the ground floor. Oh. Looks like you're going to have to go okay. back for those. Hot, hot, um, hot. Would you like the code? Just kidding. <laughs> you can pass. I should start doing stand up. Oh. Please do not. Did I just. What? That... Okay. I can't tell if that's hilarious or whether I'm going to fail them. Uh, no, that, <laughs> that actually was pretty funny. Um, I don't know how I get back to that. Or did that code open the door? Oh, that opened the exit. Gotcha. I thought the exit was up okay. there for some reason. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, that okay. was... <laughs> that was actually very funny. The fact that it took me that long to get to that bit, and then I suddenly remembered I had forgotten the code that was on the vent. <laughs> oh... <laughs> That would have been quite annoying if we'd have forgotten the code. Cool. How, I'm glad we made it all the way to the end of the game uh, before we got all the yeah. way to the end of the market. <laughs> oh, I still can't get over that. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. Good to job on that. You got me. Um, okay. So yeah, feedback-wise, definitely some some of it's been successful. Some of it maybe not as successful as they were hoping. So mm. to me, that says probably around a satisfactory because the feedback was addressed. And the changes have been somewhat successful. So some of the things yeah. worked, not everything. Okie doke. Okay, and with that, <laughs> uh, I think that uh, brings us on to the next game. And this game is Thief Chase. So, yeah, really nice title screen for this one. Uh, we've got some uh, some lovely background music. I like that we've got a level select. Uh, oh, I was going to say we've got no way of quitting. We can do. So good. All is well. So uh, let's just jump in and start game. Uh, once upon a time in a dungeon far away. Finally, I found the treasure. But wait, the chest! It's open! 
Oh no, somebody's already stolen the treasure that we we wanted to steal. Okay, off they go. So two things I like there. So we've got the the thief that we're chasing, as is the name of the game. Had the uh, controls above their head. Now we've got the controls above our head. That's kind of nice. WSD to move around. It even follows us. Lovely. And presumably, this is a coin. Hey, there's a big flash. A lovely a lovely little chirp. A big green plus two hundred that shows up. That's a really really nice information design. Yeah. Again, we can see the controls that our thief is using. So, presumably, these things are switches. So we can switch between these spike pits. That's kind of nice as well. Mm -hmm. There you go. So, we've got a little crosshair here. I, I don't know if there's anything we can shoot yet. Okay, a little bit of an extra, extra goodie for us to get there. Mm -hmm. Just for the sake of argument, let's see what happens when we trip through one of these. Okay. Okay, we're horribly murdered and then reset to the beginning. Good, as expected. But you know, it was, mm. we had to test it out, so let's... Can I, can I trip this guy and still make it to the end? Yes. Okay, I mean, our death counter has gone up as well, so we're already getting a few uh, risk-reward metrics thrown in, which is kind of nice. And then actually another one here as well. So do we go for the money? Ooh. Oh no, I've made mistakes. <laughs> so they, it feels like the, uh, the these guards, goblins, whatever they are, oh no, definitely move a little bit faster than us. So it's not it's not a viable strat strategy to uh, evade them. I just gotta. Mm. But if you're close enough to the exit, it's not an instant fail. So there's like a little bit of leeway, which is kind of interesting. And it's very clear when you are spotted and when you when you aren't, which is very nice yeah. as well. I like the red that appears. Oh no, mistakes were made. Never mind. Aha! Ah. Interesting. Yeah. No, hang on. No, 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 no. There we go. Ooh, now this is interesting. So, two mechanics that we've seen before. I. Yeah, there we go, and we can now combine them in interesting ways. And I've just realised it's one of these puzzles where... There we go. Aha! Okay, so I, I, I can see the solution to this one, and I quite like it. So, we can turn the spikes off, but we can't make it towards the gate. So what we want to do is, can I... And a hey. that's again. So this is what we mean when we're talking about sort of like integrated sets of mechanics. So taking like individual mechanics that you've got and then combining them to create interesting uh, levels. Mm. Okay, so we've got some spikes over there by the exit. We've got a switch in the middle. We've got a whole bunch of guards, and we've got a coin as well. So I'll just grab that. Presumably I've got to go around this way. I feel like I actually do run a little bit faster than them when they're just patrolling, so I guess they speed up a bit. Ooh. Okay, nice little, um, again, sort of... Well, I mean, technically textless. We, we do have like some iconography to show us the exact controls, but that's kind of nice. So we've got pick, pick up thing, left click to kill helpless guard who was only looking after his rightful treasure, but you know... <laughs> We'll, we'll dive into the morals of this another time. Uh, so, so we're going to have to probably trip one of these guards to get past. So let's, yep. And then in theory, we can probably just let this one pass, but I'll grab that anyway just in case. And we have to have a projectile counter as well, so we can store more than one of them, which is handy. I wonder if they store between levels. Mm. No. They don't. Which is good. Oh, look at this. More mechanics. I actually really like that sort of texture of floor where you've got like the, the grooves to see where these mm. things are. Like that. Plus the controls. I would, hmm. The controls of it feel really smooth. Like it's like really weighty and it's got some amount of momentum when you push it. Yeah. I'm a little surprised that you can sort of push it diagonally given like how square the grid is, but. Or I thought you could. I guess you can't push it directly diagonally, but it doesn't have to be 
perfectly aligned to the grid, but all the same, but feels very fitting. So, and again, we've got the, the thief that's shown us how, how to actually solve this first incarnation of that mechanic. Did okay. that goblin just move? Hang on, let me just retry that level. Yes. So that shows us that gobl goblins push statues. Maybe could have made that a little bit more um, emphasized. Mm -hmm. But it is good to know. So we've got blue wall in front of gate, blue switch over here, uh, red switch, red wall. So far, so good. So let's put that there. Oh, he's going to push it for us. How nice. <laughs> So the goblin stands there for a, ah, I was going to say for a suspiciously long time and then walks this way and yes, it's even given us a hint of exactly what we need to do. Mm. So again, sort of like little uh, extra sort of contextual hints of how to solve this puzzle. That's kind of nice. Yeah. Now can just commit, commit murder for money. Perfect. Okay, so while I am uh, going through the rest of this, I think we might as well kick off with uh, looking at the criteria. So, yeah, uh, so first the, off, presentation. Uh, yes, the so graphics, audio, and information design. So, um, I I can't the audio very well. I don't know. I think you said there were some nice little yeah. audio kind of like snippets. Yeah, I've turned it down a little bit. Collected. We've got some lovely ambient audio, like proper, like chunky 8 bit uh, chip tune. Oh, hang on, let's. There we go. Not push that there. I've still got my protector. Um, yeah, and there's some, like, really nice, again, sort of like chunky 8 bit sounds that really match the sort of pixely graphics um, every time there's a sound effect or something. Okay. Ooh, we've got a potion this time. What potion do? Potion make invisible. I see. Ooh. How long for? Not long enough, oh dear. Ooh, but it respawns, perfect. You kind of blink and a little bit. And there's a time bonus as the... well that I hadn't noticed before. Yes. Uh, okay, so overall, like presentation-wise, this, this is super nice. Um, I, like definitely like, like very professionally put together, I would say it's even pretty impactful. I'm mm. almost getting up to uh, prize-worthy even. So is it... Would you say there's especially novel or creative elements to it? I wouldn't say they were novel. They, these are sort of been a, you know... Like, well tried and tested, but... Yeah, so Yeah. Ooh, I think one of the... So the information design is mostly really good, like you were saying, very clear what the enemies can see or not. I can see why they've arranged the camera like they have for this level, because most of the level is going to be looking great, but it, I'm very nervous about going back here, just because I can't... I, I was going to say I can't tell where that goblin's looking. He's never going to be looking at me before I turn around. Mm. And I like... I guess we've got two different paths here, right? We've got the, the violent route or the non-violent route, which is kind of interesting. Uh, still can't oh, bump into them, though. Okay. I don't know why... Hmm. Okay, so again, I guess they're trying to go for this risk versus reward for, like, do you, do you think you're better at stealth or this? Mm. I don't think there's necessarily greater challenge and greater reward for one over the other, but it's definitely different. Yeah. Uh, but, um, okay. Oh. Oh, we got a final boss. Yeah. Look at that. Boss health and everything. Oh yeah. Hang on, I've made mistakes. So the, the fact that the music kicks up when you're being chased as well is really nice. So, uh, so okay. So, I I think we're probably looking at an excellent here. Do you reckon it's mm. maybe between excellent and prize worthy, or is it more just a solid excellent? I'd probably say it was a solid. Excellent. Okay. Okay. So moving on to uh, where are we? What are we moving on to? Meaningful play. Ooh, actually, I tell you what, that 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 could be, I think, something that maybe yeah, it stops it from getting up to the prize worthy. If these vision cones were blocked by walls, that would that would really improve things, I think. 
Yes. Um, yeah. But otherwise, th this is a really fun game. It's really good. I, they've got a lot yeah. of different mechanics. They combine them in like really interesting ways that we'll talk about more in the level design. But yeah, the mechanics work together really well. They complement each other. The controls are nice and intuitive, and they explain them well, which we'll talk about more. There's like, enough different combinations between mechanics that I'd say it's got sufficient complexity. And yeah, haven't seen any uh, any bugs. Mm. Other than, I, again, whether you count that as like a, a design choice or you know, something they didn't have time to implement, like the vision cones not, not being 100% accurate in terms of terrain, but otherwise I think this is solidly excellent. Yeah. So, should we move on to mechanics, controls, and bugs? Yes. Uh, no, that's the one we just did. <laughs> oh, sorry, okay. Uh, yeah. Next one is uh, fulfilling the brief, so level design. <laughs> uh, so, goals, risks, and rewards, so we've already talked about they've got a number of different uh, ways of rewarding the player, so bonuses for um, collectibles, bonuses for doing it in a certain amount of time. Um, I don't know whether the deaths ties d directly into the score, but it's definitely a thing that, you know, as a player, you want to uh, uh, maximize or minimize in this case. Mm. And the levels are set up to let you choose to play it safe and just get to the end, or to try and maximize some of those different things. So. Yeah, clear goal. In fact, the fact that the goal is emphasized by the thief character at the start of every level, again, yeah. like really hammers home, this is what the goal is for this level. Even though it's the same every time, it shows you also how you might achieve it. Yeah. Uh, so I think we're, we're well into at least a good, because clear and coherent goals, risks, and rewards. Possibly excellent. How well balanced do you think some of those challenges are? I'm not sure about um, the risk aspect in a sense because I, I would say that there's more sort of like a um, uh, like a more stealthy route or more. Well, here, here's um, an example here, right? Do we want to do we want to go for that coin and potentially get ourselves killed in the process, or do we want to? Oh no, I've made mistakes. Uh, or do we ignore the coin and just go for the boss? Uh, yeah, I suppose. Actually, yeah, I suppose there is a there is a like a clear risk and rewards thing there. Yeah, and if we're maximising our score at the end, then yeah. So we we're, we're, pro we're probably at a good then. Um, Can I get him to kill uh, one of these goblins? I can. Ah, that's interesting. Uh, if I don't just randomly bump into some spike. So again, that's talking about like combinations of existing mechanics. So we know that we can throw projectiles. We know the boss can throw projectiles. If we can time it right, we can get him to kill his, kill the other minions. That's a really nice touch. I like that. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so I, I think I think we're probably even between a good and excellent. I think it would be mm. nice if there were maybe more more of those opportunities, but I think, I honestly, I'm almost inclined to say it sort of hits the excellent thing. If you're if you're unsure, then yeah, maybe it's between the two. No, I, I think no, I I think we say it well, probably was an excellent actually. Yeah, okay. they are well balanced. There is you know, there's a good amount of you know um, risk, like you say, you can take money or not. Um, and I don't, I don't feel any like pressure to take the money or anything. So that's like, but it's just for a higher score. So yeah, and it is, and most of the time it's very risky. So yeah, no, I, I, I say we're quite well balanced. So yeah, uh, should we let's move on to? Uh, yeah, so next pacing. is pacing. Uh, level is definitely getting more complex. I think even within the level, you've got like certain safe spots, like the final uh, level against the boss is kind of a nice, um, what's the word, a nice example of that. So you have the, like, every time you defeat him, you get a chance to sort of catch your breath. Oh, can I use this to push him on I see? No. Bomb. Hey, and then we get a nice little cutscene at the end. Mm -hmm. 
belongs in a museum. One thing I would say. True treasure was the friends we made along the way. <laughs> and now we're wearing a shirt. That we oh, no, we've got it. Oh, yeah, that's, that's quite good. So we've got 10 deaths, total time, total score. Oh, rank E. Oh, I don't feel great now. <laughs> now I'm going to play it again. <laughs> so again, now I have to play it again to, um, to try and beat that. So yeah. we're already... Uh... Yeah. Okay, not off to a great start. Uh, too, too, too distracted with playing. Where were we? Uh, pacing, yeah. Pacing, uh, pacing. Tension definitely rises over time. It's a clear pattern. Uh, it's a coherent pattern. Seems well balanced. I would almost say it goes up to a prize worthy because part of that variation is the, the differences in gameplay, the combinations of it. What do you think? Yeah, no, I, I, I'd agree, for sure. Fab. In which case, yeah, a prize worthy one there. And then the tutorial. And again, the tutorial I think is done really, really nicely. The fact that they have like the little NPC character sort of showing you like the initial mechanics, and then they build up on that. Where first they have these guards that are just standing there statically. Now they're moving around. Uh, they introduce the different controls as and when you need them, and then they sort of take existing controls and build them together for more complexity over the course of several levels. Yeah, it's. Mm. I it's probably almost prize worthy as well. I Probably. Communicated through level design? Yeah. It is communicated through level design. Yeah, I, th I think it is. Oh, yeah. Deck, so that brings us to uh, the core mechanic. So, what is the core mechanic for this game? Uh, so, they said it was spatial reasoning, reasoning with um, chase and evade elements. I would almost say it was probably the other way round. Oh. I'd probably say it was primarily trace and evade, but then with spatial reasoning elements. I don't know. I well, it depends on the level, I suppose. Yeah, part, <laughs> part of it is down to the frame. So, for in each individual level, we're not chasing after a particular thing. That's like the overall framing of why we're doing it. But I think the individual levels are mostly um, are mostly spatial reasoning. Like, how do how do we get to the exit rather than how do we find a way of catching up to that guy? So I think I think they're right. Uh, I guess chase and evade in terms of we are uh, evading the the patrolling monsters and so on. So there is elements of that, but I think in terms of like the core motivation in gameplay, it is yeah the uh, probably the spatial reasoning. To an, there's even elements of you know race to the end because we've got the timer and we get bonus points for getting to the end as fast as possible. Mm. Yeah, so we'll, we'll probably at uh, an yeah. excellent level, maybe. A clear core dynamic that is supported by an integrated set of mechanics. They are they are integrated. I hadn't noticed we get points for murder as well. I've been I've been far too passive. Uh, oh, and we <laughs> lose points for dying as well. So this, yeah, direct motivation for uh, not dying. So again, that yeah, that really sort of emphasises the strengths of the risk versus reward. Um. Mm. Uh, yeah, core dynamic, uh, core dynamic supported by an integrated set of mechanics, absolutely. So it's all about sort of reasoning around the space. So we've got this initial like block moving puzzle. Uh, we've got the yeah, the chase and the evade look of the guards that tie together in a pretty common way. But we also have getting the guards to manipulate the blocks and things to solve puzzles. I think yeah, it's. It's a very good combination of both of them, actually. Yeah, I think, I think it's probably, like again, between an excellent and a prize-worthy. Yeah. What's the... Yeah. Okie doke. And lastly, uh, feedback. So what feedback do they get? Um... So they received feedback that they wanted that they needed to include more mechanics that tie into the stealth aspect. So they included the new item, which is the invisibility potion. Um, so you can sneak past their enemies a bit better. Okay, interesting. So, um, so that is introduced. I feel like it's not. They don't make a massive amount of use of it. 
Okay, uh, any other bits of feedback? Yeah, so they've got, um, what was it? The interact button was initially right click. So we changed the interact button to the space bar. Okay, okay. Um, mm. Alright, I mean, yeah, I think that definitely probably improved it. Uh, yeah. Maybe not as a fundamental sort of shift to. So while we're here and just talking about tutorials, that introduction of what the invisibility potion does, that's all done through level design. It never tells you, hey, this will make you invisible. It just forces you to get chased, forces you to run into it, and then shows you exactly what happens when you go invisible. Yes. That That's a, exactly what we're talking about when we're talking about tutorial through level design. Yeah. Uh, and it's also, you, you actually turn, I don't, I don't know if you already said this, but also you do turn invisible as well. Like You, you turn a little bit opaque, um, which indicates when it's going to run out and things, which is really good. Good touch. Um, what's the other? In terms of feedback, so they, they needed to they wanted to motivate the players to replay the game after they play, played it once. So they introduced a score counter, um, and they wanted the player to make more risks or or, or slow the players so they have to choose between getting the goal or completing the level quicker. And then a final score is calculated from D to S. Okay. Okay. Uh, so rank, sorry, it's calculated. Yeah. So they basically introduced a ranking system with the score. Which I th um, again, I think is interesting because not only do they have these like individual components of how to uh, okay, that way, um, of like how to motivate risk and reward, but the fact that they tie those together at the end to encourage replayability, I think, is also really nice. Mm -hmm. So okay. Um, Sounds like the feedback uh, was addressed. The changes have been successful. Some of those were, you know, slightly minor things like uh, um, cha changing one of the buttons to maybe be a bit more. Uh, uh, what's the word? A better fit. Yeah. Um, but the introduction of the score uh, or the rank rather at the end, I think, like, is a nice uh, is a nice touch as well and like a good interpretation of it. So. Yeah, so I was. Well, are we at a. We're at a good? Definitely at a good. Sorry, I got distracted by, got distracted uh, by playing the game. Um, there we go. Uh, yeah, so excellent. I would be a. Uh, feedback has been interpreted and the change. So it, some partially it was uh, done done just as uh, was told on the tin, partially uh, interpreted. So I think maybe even between a good and an excellent for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okie doke. And that brings us to the end of this game and to the end of this batch as a whole. So, thank you very much for watching. Uh, hopefully, you've enjoyed uh, the feedback these games received uh, as much as we enjoyed playing them. And we'll see you very soon for another video. Goodbye. <laughs>